Well, the season starts today, September 12, and uh, uh, that this is after just a seven-week break following the conclusion of the 2019-2020 campaign, which was disrupted by the coronavirus pandemic. And, of course, we're all looking forward to the very best of football. And I've got Okwe Adebari right here, and he's ready to go. Are you money in the club already? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. <laughs> I'm not money in any club right oh, okay. now. I'm just trying to be neutral, you know. Yeah. Going into this season, I don't want to be too optimistic mm. because I'm looking forward to great football. Yeah. So I'm not really tilting to any side. Look, I'm just looking forward to seeing um, the new signings in the league. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing the new teams as well mm. and the brand of football that they plan to display. Mm -hmm. Look, so much has been going on over the last 72 hours. True, true. Um, look, even since Sunday, let's be mm -hmm. honest, the tension has been rising. Um, about last night, look, Twitter was, it was intense. On fire. <laughs> it yeah. was on fire. I've been getting ill. I'm getting loads of messages. So look, there's so much to look forward to, and I'm mm. just ready to get into it. Mm, true. Well, I've got Jide Ladipo, who is in the UK, and of course, uh, I've got um, a Daisy Michael, but I think she has a bit of network issues right there. And there's a he's a football analyst with um, Footy Wits, and uh, uh, there's also a Bipogba Morowe, who is in um, Oman. Yes, a Chelsea fan, a strong Chelsea fan. I, I don't know. I tried to take his mind off Chelsea because there was time I asked him, he said the reason why he supports Chelsea is because of the Nigerian players. I mean, where's the Nigerian player currently playing for Chelsea? Tammy Abraham, he dumped Nigeria, remember, but he still intends to stick with Chelsea. Look on the bright side and join a club that has a Nigerian player. There's Manchester United um, there. We have, we have a Johnny Gallo playing for <laughs> Manchester United. But good to have you, um, a, a Bix. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you, Udoka. Thank you. It's good to be here again, and then to see some familiar faces like JD. Yeah. Man. <laughs> uh, Adeze, can you can you hear me? So anyhow, um, just to answer your 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 small query. Okay. Uh, it's like that. You always will start want to start with something. So I started with um, the reason why I went into Chelsea, and um, um, fortunately, I fell in love. It's like that mm. you know so, so right now i'm in love and i want to stay in love thanks <laughs> you want to stay in love well it's it's fine and uh, I, I, I like the <laughs> fact that um chelsea they've done well in the transfer window they've gotten the likes of kai Havertz. there's also timo verna uh there's Zayech and and the likes and of course it looks like frank lampard knows what he's doing with the club and i hear rumors that he made a comment that he wants to win the epl season this 2020 2021 yes um well what I read from um, one of his tweets was that um, it's not enough to get in the, the young players, not mm. also enough to to getting uh, the best players, but what he wants to do is to mm. win. Yeah, um, winning this season, to, in my own opinion, um, it's it's a shot too high, if I, if I might say, because um, most of the players are new and yeah. it, it usually will take some time for them to blend in and then mm. Then we'll be talking about winning. It took uh, Guardiola quite some uh, pep for him also to, to start winning. The same thing too with um, Liverpool. So you, the, the team needs to, to blend. So you can't really expect, the expectations will not be winning this season. But my word, they have a good team right now, mm. I must say. Mm. All right. Well, I see someone wearing an Arsenal jersey there. I think that's Ahis, um, a football analyst with Footy with. Good to have you with us, Ahis. Yes, thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, and you, you seem excited, looking forward to the new season. I'm so excited. I heard Okwe talking before saying he does he wants Arsenal to lose today's game, and I'm surprised. It's kind of like surprised why he wants that. And as an Arsenal fan, you should be you should be buzzing right now because good things are happening mm. at the Arsenal. You know, Arteta coming in. We knew where um, Una Emery was heading us to. It was heading us to obstruction and destruction. Mm. And um, Ateta came in, and now Arsenal is on the rise. Mm. Nine months, winning two trophies in 29 days, the FA Cup and also the FA Community Shield. Even if some people tend to say that the FA Community Shield is not a trophy, mm. but the one special one counted it as a trophy mm -hmm. when he did it at Manchester United. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why Arsenal fans shouldn't be buzzing that we got the FA Community Shield. Okay. And also, moving on to Mikel Arteta doing good things. You see what he's doing. Arsenal is on the high right now. We are going higher and higher, and there's nothing stopping us. So it's good, good times at Arsenal. 
Good times in Arsenal. Mm. All right, good times in Arsenal. GD, I mean, this happens with the Arsenal fans season in, season, season out. At the start of the season, we see the Arsenal fans buzzing and all. But when the season kicks off, probably about three, four matches into the season, we hear them saying um, Wenger out, Emery out, um, Ateta out. Are we expecting that for this season? No, I don't think so. Mm. Um, I have to agree with her. It's, there is cause for enthusiasm and there's cause to be um, optimistic and not pessimistic. Mm. Um, everyone on this call would agree that under Mikel Ateta, Arsenal has actually improved quite a lot. Um, and I see that trend continue, con, you know, continuing into the future. Now, what I'm going to say is the league is a completely different game. Mm -hmm. You know, I was having a, a chit chat just before the show with um, Ace, and what he said was, if Arsenal can treat, you know, the league like a cup game, that means that you have to win or else you get knocked out. Then they will be in contention for the league. So if Arsenal and learn to pick up those points that they dropped last season. I mean, last season, they were losing to teams like Aston Villa and Brighton. It was just absolutely a missile. If they picked up a lot of those points that they lost to those mid-league mid -league level, um, mid -league, um, table teams, they would have made it to the um, Champions League, you know? Yeah. Um, so I just think Arsenal needs to kind of brush up in those areas. Even if they're losing to top four teams away and they're kind of drawing a win at home and they're beating all these mid-league mid -league, um, table teams home and away, you know, they're definitely going to be in contention. But it's too early to start celebrating. That's what I'm telling Arsenal fans. Yeah. Please, be a bit conservative. Give these guys some time. He's done so well so far. He's won you the um, FA Cup. And he's also won you the... The Community the, Shield. The community, community Shield. Let him slowly get the team to where he wants to get it to. He still oh. needs an imposing midfielder. I hope, hopefully, they can get some of party from Atletico Madrid. Oh. Arsenal will be a complete team if they do that. All right, 0906 000 is the number to call. Uh, call into the show and let's uh, have your thoughts on uh, the new season and what your expectations are. Um, okay, um, let's talk about um, the contenders for the highest goal scorer for the 2020-2021 season. We have a couple of new players, strikers, mm -hmm. left, right and centre, but we have the consistent ones who do it season in season out, the likes of um, Jimmy Vardy for Leicester City, Aubameyang for Arsenal. There's also... Um, if he returns, Sergio Aguero for Manchester mm. City, there's also Gabriel Jesus, Harry Kane for Tottenham Hotspur, Hotspur uh, for Manchester United, this is the regular um, um, superstars when it comes to Rashford and uh, um, Martial. Who do you think, I know it's too early to call, mm -hmm. but who do you, which of these players you see making it to the end of the season as one of the highest goal scorers, the contenders? Uh, first of all, I think an unusual name, I'll say, is Danny Ings. Mm. Um, look, he's been in brilliant form so far and was actually like the first English player to score 20 plus goals um, in a season for the first time in five years. So I was very impressed with him. And I was actually wondering why he didn't get as much minutes with mm. um, England while on international DLC. But that's someone to look out for. When he's in form, he's in blistering form. And I'm looking forward to um, more goals for him, hopefully 20 plus goals again. Mm. Um, so apart from um, Danny Ings, Another culprit is obviously P. Emerick Aubameyang. Mm. Look, you just can't but not mention his name. And then Sadio Mane. Hopefully, he has a much better season. And then as well, Jamie Vardy. Mm. Those are the major culprits for me. But then some other players who might spring up, number one has to be Timo Werner. Yeah. Um, look, he's got a great goal-scoring record. Um, the numbers are fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. He's a top-flight striker, irrespective of the fact that, you know what, he was, he's coming from Germany. But then he's proven quality both in the Champions League and international football with Germany. Chelsea fans saw a glimpse of him with the first friendly match that he did play against Brighton as well um, as the international game which Germany played against Spain. So look, um, he's an exciting player. I don't, I'm not convinced that he's an out-and-out -out striker, okay? But then I feel like the more he gets um, into the team, the more he tends to um, blend with his teammates, definitely he'll be a much better player. We might see a link up between him and Tammy Abraham. Mm. Maybe that will give him more freedom um, to score more goals. Definitely, Sergio Aguero has to be one of them. Yeah. But then, injuries, injuries, injuries. That's mm. just the mantra for Sergio Aguero over the last five years. Yeah. He's been struggling just to be fit. So hopefully, number one, he doesn't get rushed back into fitness. He needs to take his time so mm -hmm. that he could um, heal more and feel a whole lot better. Maybe mm. feel like a spring chicken once again <laughs> okay. and bang in 25 plus goals again because we need that from Sergio Aguero. We all know how good he is, but then if he's going to leave the Premier League, this is going to be his last season. I mean, he needs to leave um, with a bang. Harry Kane is another usual culprit. 
But then since his last um, knee injury, he's, he's really not been the same. Movement has not been the same. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's so pivotal to Spurs that, you know what, anytime he's injured, they always fast track his recovery process. Look, he's a human being, first of all. Mm -hmm. I believe they need to remember that the body takes time to heal. Apart from that, he needs a decent run of games. When he's back to full fitness, don't just jump and put him in and give him 90 minutes. No, take it gradually, 10, 20, one hour, then you can start going for probably 80 plus minutes and then full 90 minutes. Let him have a gradual um, recovery. So definitely, if Hurricane is treated properly, he will have a much better season. I'm really not going to consider any of the Manchester United starlets in, in terms of the risk for the Golden Boots. Um, they're really not the finished product. Talking about the likes of Mason Greenwood, Anthony Martial and Marcus Rashford, mm. they have a whole lot more to do. Yeah. I would honestly, this is no sentiment attached. I believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to put um, Igalo more in and probably Igalo is more complete striker compared to those three and mm. definitely he'll get them more goals if he starts. All right, we have Habib from Lagos, Ireland joining us on the conversation. Good to have you with us, Habib. Hello. Hello. Yeah, good to have you with us. Good morning. Yeah, quickly share your thoughts. Yes, um, I'm, first of all, I'm a good fan of the show. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yes. um, I'm a Manchester United fan. Okay. And this season, I can tell you that I'm not people at all. Mm. I need I need Sosha to become braver. Even though we speak with this thing, I need Sosha to become braver with his choices. Mm. I need the, uh, thank God Henderson is back now, so I can give the girl a bit of a shot up the back. We need better performances from the year if we are going to do anything this season. Last season we were lucky thanks to the break from Corona. And now I don't think we we'll have a chance to be this lucky again. All right. Um, but, I mean, your expectations for the new season, do you think Manchester United would at least win something this season? I, I think we can do well in the court. We can have a very good court around this season, maybe the FA Cup. Or the calling Cup. Mm. Okay, and uh, for the signing so far, Van der Beek, and there's a possibility Jaden Sancho will be joining up with the squad, but nothing confirmed yet. But you're not, you, you don't seem satisfied so far. I'm not satisfied at all. Wow. I know, I'm happy with get Van der Beek, but we need we need a defensive midfield. And Matic, Matic Lowe cannot carry us for like eight games in the season. Focus on the Champions League and um, other cops. Mm. I mean, it's very good, but you can't rely on him throughout. Mm. True. Thank you very much, Abi, for your thoughts. Thank you very much. All right, continue to enjoy the show. Um, going back to my guests now, let me go straight to um, GD. You heard the Manchester United fan, and a couple of other fans are complaining that they're not satisfied with what they've done so far in the transfer window. Manchester United, Tottenham Hotspur, we hear that strikers are not going over to that club because they're wondering who is going to bench Harry Kane, what striker out there, which of the strikers out there is strong enough to bench Harry Kane at Tottenham Hotspur. So the fans are complaining, but it looks like some other clubs are okay with what they've done so far in the transfer market. Uh, yeah, with Manchester United is a bit of a funny one. Uh, they have a lot of resources up front mm -hmm. at the moment. So if it's not broken, why try and fix it? That's yeah. the issue that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is dealing with at the moment. Um, so he's definitely not going to buy any other striker apart from the guys mm -hmm. that he has. I do agree with the guest in the show. Um, Martic's leg cannot carry. I mean, he's aging. And then when you look at the number of fixtures that they're going to have this year, they need a solid defensive midfielder that will back up, um, you know, that section of the field oh. for them. So I don't think they've done well in the, the um, midfield department in terms of getting a, a midfielder that can help them defend well. But I have good news for them in the signing of Donny van der Beek. He's a very versatile player, very intelligent and very clever as well. True. Uh, they need somebody that can score goals from mid midfield because last season, you know, the striking partnership was very erratic. Sometimes Greenwood would score, Rashford was going in and out. Marshall was definitely inconsistent. So they need a midfielder that will bang in the goals that Drogba is not banging. And I'm happy that Donny van der Beek is in there as well, just to give Drogba some, some sort of, um, you know, 
a competition. So he's a very good player, very clever, very enth enthusiastic. You know, he's got loads of energy. He's still young as well. He's like 23. Yeah. Uh, and I think it would help them in that aspect of scoring more goals. Um, Tottenham, Tottenham has been very, very conservative with business. They've not really done much. Um, I think they're just relying on the players that they have at the moment. Mm -hmm. Harry Kane is a regular goal scorer with the Premiership. He knows he's a regular customer for a lot of um, football clubs that play against them. And he knows how to find the, um, the back of the net. So, um, you know, I don't think they're, they're planning to buy anyone. I think they should get another striker to complement Harry Kane. Because what happens when he gets injured? That's yeah. what a lot of these clubs don't think about sometimes. True. Um, going straight to uh, his, yes, the Arsenal fan, the only man who is proud of his club, because I, I don't know, Jude is not supporting any club at the moment. Um, a big over there in Oman is not wearing his Chelsea jersey, and he says he loves Chelsea. But, it, I mean, uh, he's a strong Arsenal fan. I've known him for years. But what are your thoughts on the new signings that are coming into um, the English Premier League? Or Arsenal or other teams, you mean? Other teams, but yeah, you can talk about your club. Okay. Yeah, all the teams for Chelsea, we see what um, Lampard is trying to do, mm -hmm. bringing in, spending over 200 million pounds, if I'm correct, bringing in ZH, Timo Werner, and um, the other guy, Carl Havertz, I don't know if, if I yeah. mentioned the name right. And, you know, and um, the, the problem I have about Lampard or with his signing, because as a last season, when he got the job with Chelsea, Lampard was spinning the narrative of working with the youth, working with the youth, mm -hmm. integrating the youth into the into the main team. But all of a sudden, the narrative has changed. Now spending a whole lot of money investing into the team. And we know Chelsea, the owner of the Chelsea, is he that patient enough? Will he be patient enough for Lampard if this entire season goes without Lampard bringing in any trophy? And Lampard on his own, while I was at the championship with Derby, at the big stage where he was supposed to take it to the next level, he bottled it, he lost, he couldn't take Derby into the EPL. Okay. Same with the season, this last season that went by, in the final of the right. Africa, Africa Cup with Arsenal, he lost it. And a, a call, um, looking at online, Lampard, critically, take this if call. he doesn't achieve anything with this team, we know what is going to happen. The mm -hmm. owner might take him out or send him out. Now, talking right. about my team, Arsenal, a lot of improvement here and there. GD mentioned Arsenal need to bring in a steal in the midfield. We need to solidify that midfield. And I think they are working towards that, bringing in party. We see Martinez putting in the transfer. He doesn't want to play for us. I want to play second fiddle to Leno, so mm -hmm. he wants out. And I know a bit of cash from there. And also we're looking at selling Torreira as well. A bit of cash in there, those two players, we can sum up the money to see how we can fund the release clause for party. And when party comes in, I think the next the, the, the rest is history and I feel mm. Arsenal will get to that <laughs> solid state which they were in two thousand and three and two thousand and four okay. going invincible. All right, well um... Ateta has said that in three years, Arsenal will be winning the EPL title. We have Shedrak on the line and uh, he also wants to share his thoughts. Good to have you with us, Shedrak. Yeah, good morning. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Quickly share your thoughts with us. Yeah, I am a Liverpool fan. Okay. And Never walk my alone. issue today is more of a rant because I don't know why you're going to club. There's no one to sign more players. Okay. <laughs> So, well, I mean, you, you have players it's... who won the, the, the league last season and he said he doesn't need to spend so much money the way Chelsea are going about it. Yeah, I don't think it's money. It's the, the, it's the boss money. So he has, to, he has to spend the money. Thiago has been there all along. Timo Werner has been, was there and has been taken away by Chelsea. So I don't know. If he does not want to win the league, this is very last for the season. Hmm. Well, I think he has other hopes of leaving the club too. Okay, thank you very much, Shedrak, for your thoughts. Thank you very much. Yeah, going straight to Oman and speaking with the bigs, uh, let's talk about these new teams that have been promoted to the English Premier League. Um, Leeds United, Fulham, and West Bromwich Alb Alb Albion. Um, how far do you see them going this season? Well, um, unfortunately, I don't follow mo uh, much of the, um, the champions, uh, um, the, the lower league. Yeah. But again... I know about Leeds because I know they have a, a very good coach yeah. and I've uh, seen one or two of, um, of them play and in my opinion Leeds, Leeds will be the, the team that will really shake up the, premier, the premiership right now. Mm. Um, 
I, okay. I, I see leads going even um, above the um, the lower uh, the, the uh, upper ten of the of, of the Premiership. Mm. But for the others, I'm not so sure. So I really can't say much about um, them right now. Okay. All right. Thank you for your thoughts. Uh, we have Sunday calling from Lagos. Good to have you with us, Sunday. Thank you, Doka, for having me. Yeah. Quickly, uh, share your quickly, thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Quickly, I want to talk about um, Chelsea. Yeah. I'm scared because um, Lampard has spent a lot yeah. in the transfer market. Mm. So we await what he will do. Of course, we know that um, Baba Olowo, as he's usually called, <laughs> does not waste time in firing coaches. So yeah. I want to know what he will come up with. All eyes are on him. We already know the top uh, four. Um, the likes of uh, Liverpool, Ch um, Man City, and yeah. of course, Manchester United. Oh. But I also have a doubt for Manchester United because I'm also a United fan. They have not spent a lot in the transfer market, but we still mm. have the likes of Gallo, Rashford, and uh, Marshall. So let's see what um, they are going to do. I all pray right. they also make top four and then perform well in the Champions League as well. All right. Thank you very much, so Sunday. So look forward for a very good season. All right. Thank you season. very much. Thank you very much, yeah, as you always. You know, I, I like it when fans go spiritual and the prayers have actually set in. So let's see how it will turn out for each and every one of them. But I know we don't have time on our side, but I'll give GD um, 10 seconds, quickly do a wrap and uh, um, looking at the likely predict predictions of what will go down this season. GD. All the way for me. Um, I strongly believe that he has learned a lot from what happened last season. Oh. I'm talking about Pep Guardiola. And they've actually gone out and done some good business. They bought two new players. Um, they spent 41 million on Nathan Ake and uh, Ferran Torres from um, Valencia as well. They spent 20 million. So I think they're going to win the league. Oh. Arsenal might possibly be able to do top four this season as well. Um, Liverpool, definitely top four. Chelsea, even though they're, they're spending a lot of money, I'm not too sure about Chelsea. Okay. And the reason why I'm saying that is I think this job is going to overwhelm Frank Lampard. Mark my words. Okay. You know, he might not be the coach of Chelsea at the end of the season. Wow. So, yeah. All right. That's we'll my see. prediction for it. Highest goal scorer, Timo Werner. Watch out for that guy. When mm. he was with um, his last club, he scored 78 goals in 127 games. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Watch out for him. Aubameyang, I think he's going to keep banging in the goals. All right. Um, so he might be going for the golden boots as well. So those are my predictions. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we really need to go. But I will say thank you very much once again, guys, for joining the conversation. Pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thanks, right. Sudoka. And Okwe, right. thank you very much for joining on the conversation as well. Always a pleasure. All right. Keep it locked down to Plus TV Africa. I'm Udoka and Joko saying please enjoy the rest of your day.